There was a report recently of a woman in San Francisco suffering from nathostomiasis. I learned about it in med school and never actually saw a case, though evidently it's now on the rise. Clinically, the disease commonly presents as migratory cutaneous swellings, bumps on the skin that move around. Why? Because there's a worm under there. Uh, they migrate through the subcutaneous tissues under the skin and cause migratory episodes, recurrent episodes of migratory swelling, or creeping eruptions. Now, there's no effective treatment, really, other than removal of the worm. Here's a picture of the thing. Uh, notice head has these little rings of little hooks that allow it to burrow through tissue. Because humans are essentially a dead-end host for the larva, no further development in mature worms can occur, and symptoms are experienced owing to the wandering of the organisms throughout the body. It can also crawl into our eyeballs. A 42-year-old woman with a four-year history of migratory swellings on her face, then a little bleeding from the eyelid. You know where this is going. No problem, though. You can make a little cut, stick some forceps in, locate the worm, and then just uh, pull the puppy out of the eyeball. But if you have any pimples on your face that move around, better to grab them before they start swimming around in your eyes. By far the most serious manifestation, though, is when they get into your brain. As the worm migrates along the nerves, the patient can experience excruciating pain. It can lead to paralysis, bleeding in the brain, and finally death. But in non-cerebral diseases, the worms that die, though it may take about 12 years. How do the worms get into our brain, though? So-called neuronathostomiasis? These uh, nathostoma worms are highly invasive parasites. After leaving the sushi bar, the larvae penetrate the wall of the intestine. They can then enter the brain through the base of the skull, crawling along the spinal nerves and vessels. Uh, they start out in the nerve roots, enter the spinal cord, and then can climb up into our brain. Uh, the worm isn't poisonous or anything. It's just a migration of the worm through the body that causes direct mechanical injury just because of the tearing of the nerve tissue. Bottom line. This diagnosis should be considered in patients who present with nonspecific little lumps and bumps, especially when there's a history of frequent consumption of raw fish. Thankfully, most uh, raw foodists stick to plants and thereby avoid things like this. 21-year-old woman experiences acute severe pain in her mouth immediately after swallowing a raw squid. Seems consumption of a squid with sperm bags and the active ejaculatory apparatus can lead to unintended ejection of the sperm bag and injury to the oral cavity. The habit of eating raw food, especially living organisms, is risky. Though some living organisms, plants are substantially less risky than others.